All right, with that, we bring in our man with extensive knowledge of how Putin operates, Dmitry Alterich, former special advisor to the Department of Defense, founder of the Silverado Policy Accelerator. Um, if somebody says they're going to nuke you, shouldn't you pay a little bit more attention to that? Well, the reality is, Leland, that Russia, of course, has thousands of nuclear weapons, um, thousands of missiles. So a handful of interceptors that we have in our uh, missile defense shield right now is not going to stop them. So um, if they want to keep uh, innovating and, and building new missiles at an enormous cost to them and their economy, uh, for the fears of a handful of interceptors for our missile defense systems, I would say more power to them, uh, knock yourself out. But uh, it really does not change at all the security and the safety of this country, which is primarily based on nuclear deterrence, mutually assured destruction concept, not necessarily uh, missile defense. Right, but which we, we can we all just agree that having that test now sends a message. Vladimir Putin talked about how it should, would be a message to our enemies. The U.S. has not had those tests and delayed them specifically for the reason they didn't want to provoke Putin. You think about what we saw on Kremlin TV, what we heard, and how Kremlin TV relates to Vladimir Putin. Does it relate in the same way, say, Fox News and some of its personalities related to President Trump when he was in office? Well, I think it's very different, but there are two reasons why you may hear sort of these types of outrageous statements on Russian television. One reason is that Putin does want to prepare the population for the steps that he may want to take in the future. But the other reason is that he wants to look like the reasonable ones. Sometimes you have very crazy, very insane statements be made like this so that he has room to maneuver and he can say, look, I'm the good alternative here. There are people that can come to power. They're much crazier than I am you should continue supporting me and not the people that are advocating for nuclear war. We'll take a listen, though, to how President Biden addresses Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine first versus how he addresses Vladimir Putin with nuclear missiles. Take a listen. War criminal. War criminal. I think he is a war criminal. Declares war and commits genocide. Yes, I call this genocide. But if you want to threaten nuclear war, we're not going to even acknowledge it is the White House party line. Yeah, and, and you know what? I actually do think it's right because the reality is that Russia does have the capacity to destroy the United States, to destroy the world, um, and so do we. And that has kept the peace uh, since 1950s when Russia acquired nuclear weapons. And the reality is that our missile defense cannot, is not capable of stopping Russian missiles, existing ones, if they want to build new ones. Who cares? Because that does not change the overall threat dynamic for the nation. Obviously, that's the, the strategic and, and macro view. Micro view is what's happening on the ground right now in Ukraine. Mariupol, which is in the south, strategic city for Russia to capture. So they basically have all of the Donbass. They're able to go from Crimea back into Mother Russia. They have, are able to carve out so much of the eastern part of Ukraine. Uh, it's, it's all but done in Mariupol. Uh, and the Russians seem to be having a, a little bit better time in the East, uh, certainly than they did around Kyiv. Uh, your tweet caught our opinion, somewhat contrarian opinion. Uh, the war ending is already predetermined regardless of the outcome of the upcoming fight for the Donbass. Um, you're, you have proven to be, be a prophet going all the way back to December when you predicted all of this. What is the predetermined outcome? So here's what I think will happen. Regardless of how this fight ends, whether the Russians succeed in the Donbass or they fail, and it's probably a 50-50 outcome right now on that front, it actually won't matter for the overall strategic situation because Putin, either way, will claim victory by having taken Mariupol, by holding her son, having his land bridge to Crimea. He will claim he'll, he has demilitarized Ukraine and denazified it. So it gives him an opportunity to say to the Russian population, major hostilities have ended. However, the low-level intensity conflict will continue because the Ukrainians will continue to fight, the Russians will continue to retaliate. And here's the real problem for the Ukrainians. Their economy is literally being choked out by the Russians. They've taken Mariupol port, of course, already. They blockaded Odessa. Huge part of the Ukrainian economy relies on exports through those ports. And, and if they continue to lob missiles at Lviv, at Kiev, at other cities in Western Ukraine, this is gonna be a huge problem for the Ukrainian society in trying to rebuild the country. And in the long term, um, I'm afraid that this is, uh, not, does not bode well for the Ukrainians. Of course, the Russians have their own problems economically, uh, but for the Ukrainians to be able to win this war and rebuild the country, the Russians can definitely try to stop that. 
Yeah, you think about it, the Ukrainians today said they need $7 billion a month to try and support their economy, which who knows uh, where that's going to come from. Hey, Dimitri, we always appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, good. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.